Yung rating ko, pangit. Yeah. Mag- at- harap ka bro sa window. Ano man naman limited ang space dito, ka? Ayan bro. Bro, we're live on our When in Halifax Facebook. What's up mga kap? Eh, wala ka nang What's up mga kap? Welcome to our fourth cup kapihan dito sa When in Halifax. So, eto yung pang-apat na tasa. Ayan, pang-apat na tasa na natin. So, very special yung topic natin kasi ito yung topic na pinag-uusapan at at the same time marami nagtatanong. Hindi ko din maisagot. Ito ang spousal sponsorship and at the same time sex Uh, same-sex marriage. Paano ko ba makukuha yung partner ko? Pwede ko ba makuha yung partner ko? So, ito yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. And of course, huwag na natin patatagalin. Let's welcome Kat Rose. Ayan. Kat Rose, pasok! Ayan! Hi! Hi! Ayan! So, we are live sa ating When in Halifax, Kat. And of course, before we start, Kat, I just want to acknowledge all our cup na nandito sa ating webinar. Nandiyan si Special K, of course, si Daisy, si Aili, I- Jerly, and Mike Santos. Ayan, and of course, syempre, ang ating special guest na si Kat. And mga Kat, if you want to join our conversation, gusto nyo magtanong directly kay, kay Kat, Katrin Rhodes, just join the webinar, click the link on the, subscri- uh, on the description, may link po yan ng Zoom, join po kayo. So ayan, Kat, and first of all, maraming salamat for joining us. And yun, let's start from sharing your timeline. Uh, ano ba yung kwento ni Katrin Rhodes para makapunta dito sa Canada? And you mentioned also na um, nagkaroon ka ng spouse and at the same time, um, yung kwento mo nga same-sex marriage. Paano ba yun? Uh, gusto namin malaman and share us about your journey going uh, from Philippines to Canada. Okay, so first of all, thanks for having me, Cap Joey, and everybody who's in the <laughs> group. Um, so I arrived here in Nova Scotia last year on August 1, and so I entered here as a, a temporary resident. Uh, so parang, parang tourist visa. Uh, sorry, uh, Kat. Sorry, Kata. Um, sorry. Na, na off, off ko yung microphone sa ano sa sa webinar. So, Kat, pwede pa ulit from the start yung sinabi mo kasi naka-off ko yung microphone mo. Okay. Yan. Okay. Hi, uh, <laughs> so, ayan. Um, hi, Kat. Kat, Joey, and to everybody uh, who's watching. And thanks for having me today. Um, so, I came here, I arrived here in Nova Scotia last year, August 1. Um, I entered with a temporary resident visa, so para tourist visa, if you compare it to the U.S. And yun, a few weeks later, kinasal dito sa Canada. So, yun. So, Kat, tanong ko lang from the Philippines. Naging ano, ano. Naguguluhan ako sa aking live streaming. So anyway, so from the Philippines, Kat, um, nakilala mo yung partner mo or nasa Pilipinas, nasa Canada ka? Um, well, nagkakilala kami sa Pilipinas way back um, 2009 pa. So we were both working for a call center company. Mm-hmm. I was starting as an agent, customer service representative at that company. And then mm-hmm. Pinadala sila ng New Glasgow, which is Nova Scotia site. Uh-huh. Doon sa site namin sa Manila to help us, you know, to support us with the RAM. So, doon kami nakakilala. We, we met as, as, you know, as friends talaga. Uh-huh. So, gano'n yung katagal? Like, for example, doon tayo sa love story na muna. No? So, can you tell us about your ano, your spouse, uh, Kat? Para at least they have idea um, sino uh, yung iyong spouse. Yeah. So, I, so you spouse ko, you wife ko, well, we, we say it's wife, diba? Kasi, pakasal ka. So, um, she's a middle school teacher here in uh, Nova Scotia. Um, and so, when we met, she was still, you know, she didn't know that she was 
lesbian okay. at that time. So, parang talagang friends na kami and then we stayed in contact for the whole time na, you know, nandudun ako sa Filipinas, living my own life, and then we were living our separate lives, and then, but we, we kept in contact. So, nabusap kami once in a while, and yun. So, right now, uh, she's, she's on summer break. Mm-hmm. Like all the other teachers. Mm-hmm. So the teacher sa she's teaching English. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yung so, process well, is well, nagkakilala kayo sa Pilipinas. Uh, of course, mm-hmm. yempre nag uh, may relationship. And then nangyari is correct me if I'm wrong is nagpakasal kayo inside Canada na hindi sa Pilipinas. Kasi sa yes. Pilipinas is hindi, wala wala po tayong uh, same-sex marriage sa Pilipinas. So, ang nangyari is, pumunta ka sa Canada as a TRV or Temporary Residence Visa. Is that right? Tama ba? Correct. And then, sa, sa Temporary Residence Visa, inside Canada, doon nangyari yung ceremony. Doon nangyari yung um, kas, uh, kasal. So, from there, um, doon, uh, doon kayo nag, nag-stay ka na dito or paano nangyari nag, nag, uh, nagkaroon ng wedding and then after paano mo na process yung temporary residence visa into a spousal kasi from Philippines in relationship tapos bumalik nandito siya sa Canada and then pumunta ka din sa Canada for tem- temporary resident visa and then from temporary resident visa nagpakasal kayo inside Canada paano na i-convert yung, yung documents mo from TRB to uh, process ng spousal? Um, yeah, so pagdating ko dito, well, actually, pumunta muna siya sa Philippines ng June and then sabay kami bumalik dito. So parang ang nangyari is kinuha niya ako sa Philippines. Parang ganun. Tapos, pagdating dito, we only had like a few weeks to plan for the wedding. Um, and then after ng wedding, we did have uh, an officiant. So, it's like a typical wedding ceremony. Mm-hmm. So, kasi legal naman siya. So, doc- may documents and all mm-hmm. that. Um, and then, we had to wait for like mga 30 days to receive our marriage certificate. And then, kasi isa yung mga naging requirement. So, as soon as we have all the information needed, na pinasa na namin siya. But we we hired uh, an immigration lawyer to help us with the application. Mm-hmm. Kasi when we were starting the entire process, yung sa temporary visa pa lang, uh, so we were both busy, we were both working, and we were not physically together. So mahirap yun. Um, so we decided to hire an immigration lawyer for that. And then siya yung nag-provide sa amin ng lahat ng requirements na kailangan. And um, yun, actually, we, we initially planned to submit um, a conjugal uh, partner or uh, a permanent residen- residency visa through conjugal partnership some, or common law. Yan. But then, you know, when the lawyer found out na magpapakasal kami, she then just um, recommended to, you know, for me to get a temporary resident visa so I can come here. And then from here, um, we can do the wedding since legal naman siya dito. And it, it's going to make the application a lot easier kasi I'm going to file my permanent residency as a spouse, hindi na sa conjugal. Kasi medyo parang mas mataas, I would say mas mataas yung percentage ng you know, approval if it's through spousal rather than conjugal or common law. Kasi mas maraming, I would say mas complicated yung mga, ano eh, yung mga requirements ni common law. Kasi hindi naman kayo, di ba, married. So, they would need more proof na, na in a relationship kayo for the longest time. Right. Uh, with regards sa mga kap natin, regarding sa common law, ano ba yung difference ng common law at common law at kasal? With regards sa common law, sa Pilipinas, ang term niyan is lived in eh. So, Correct. pareho kayong nagsasama sa bahay. Uh, yung uh, ginagawa nyo is nasa bahay kayo, meron kayong anak, Ang kunang lang talaga sa common law is yung papel, yung marriage contract. Pero pareho, may tumitira kayo sa isang bahay, kung meron kayong anak, nanitira kayo sa isang bahay. So pareho, yung common law, yung live-in at yung kasal, pareho. Ang kulang lang sa dalawang yan ay yung marriage contract. So dito kay Kat, ang nangyari is, pumunta dito sa, uh, sa Nova Scotia, Canada, as temporary resident visa, 
hindi na dumaan sa common law kundi nag-ano na ng ano ng marriage. So instead of common law, big present nila is the marriage contract. So um mas napabilis ba yung process? I, I I know you mentioned about the process, mas napabilis yung process. Gaano kabilis kat? Actually, um kung temporary resident visa, mabilis mabilis talaga siya kasi um kasi kung easy, if I will think back kung prenasas namin sinubmit namin yung common law uh, application, feeling ko talaga kasi it would take 12 up to 12 months. Parang gano'n ang na-remember ko. So, ang pinakamabilis na entry ko talaga is yung temporary resident visa. Kasi when I uh, when we completed all the requirements, since kinokolekta na namin siya before eh, kasi we were planning for the common law um, sponsorship. So, completed the requirements and then we just changed the application to temporary resident visa for myself. And then, I didn't have to go to the office in Makati for, you know, paper submission kasi the lawyer sent it online. And then, and actually, kahit hindi naman wala kayong lawyer na i-hire, pwede kayong mag-file ng application online. So, I only went there, I showed up for biometrics one day. Um, and mabilis lang siya kasi nakaschedule ka na eh. Um, and then, well, they, the lawyer gave us instructions na pumunta ako sa ganitong date, tapos I should bring these requirements, and then pumunta ako, nag-biometrics, and then the post. And then they nor- they say na ang process would take two weeks for the result ng visa. But then, in a week time, nakuha ko na yung result na approved na siya. So, bumalik ako sa Makati office to pick up my passport with my visa. Yeah. So, so mabili- mabilis yung process, temporary resident visa sa Philippines. Correct. Correct. Uh-huh. Um, Kat, sa lahat ng mga nanonood, kasi I know yung TRV are very new to them. Ano ba yung TRV katumbas ito, uh, Kat? Ito ba ay tourist visa or another form of of program? Um, yung, yung temporary resident visa, uh, it's similar to how the tourist visa works in the US. Um, they just have different terms kasi nga, different countries. Um, but you know the maximum month that you can i'm not sure if it's the same for the us pero the maximum month na pwede ka magstay is maximum of 6 months from the date of entry so if you know yun yung unless bibigyan ka ni ng uh, dates uh, passport mo kung kailan ka kailangan umalis pero nung nangyari pa kasi pagpasok ko sa pagdating ko sa ontario airport or toronto um hindi naman ako nilagay ng date na ganun kasi when i got there Tinanong ako ng immigration officer ba siya? I'm not sure if that's the right term. So, he's like, so, where's your final destination here in Canada? Sabi ko ng ganun, uh, Nova Scotia. Okay, and what are you doing here in, Nova- in Canada? I said, I'm getting married. Diretso lang sagot ko kasi yun naman talaga yung reason, di ba? And then, and then after that, chinect niya yung passport, yung visa, and then wala siyang ibang ginawa, tinignan niya lang. And then, siguro nag-stamp siya ng date ng arrival. And then, Sabi niya, congratulations. So, yun. Yun lang. So, yun. Temporary resident visa is parang tourist visa siya. Mm-hmm. So, yun. I, you can also get one entry and multiple entry. Mm-hmm. In my case, I got multiple entry. Wow. So, okay naman. Wow. So, napakaganda. Napakaganda yung um, nangyari sa iyo is from... Nakaplano talaga eh. Y- yun ang nap- napakaganda. Yung Insa- sabi nga sa mga cup is... You need to create a strategy as well and planning. Hindi lang basta-basta, ito gagawin ko, no? So you need to create a plan. And of course, congratulations, Kat, kasi very successful ang yung entry. And I know you're already, naghintay na lang, no? Or still working pa ba ng papel? Um, in process pa rin siya, eh. Um, mm-hmm. So, d- dalawa yung applications na pending for me. Mm-hmm. One is yung work permit. Mm-hmm. Kasi we sent it along with the uh, per- permanent, permanent resident visa. Mm-hmm. And uh, yung permanent resident visa would take up to 12 months processing. So, yun, medyo matagal-tagal pa talaga. Ayan. So, yun, congratulations. I know, sabi nga natin dito sa Wendy in Halifax, think positive. Ayan. So, claim it. But anyway, Kat, um, pag pinag-usapan kasi natin yung common law at yung married, pag common law, kailangan natin i-prove na kayo'y nagsasama and one of the requirements ng common law is meron kayong 
uh, mortgage, dapat nakapangalan sa inyong dalawa, may mga bills kayo, nakapangalan sa inyong dalawa sa common law, and at the same time, kailangan din sa common law, naka uh, mga may mga contract, alam mo yun, mapapatunay na nagsasama kayo sa isang bahay. So, kasi marami tayong mga kap dito, Kat, na this is their first time to hear about common law. And this is their first time to to hear about TRB at nagpakasal dito sa sa Canada. Sa marriage, nagpakasal na kayo, let's imagine, nagpakasal na kayo, eto na, meron na kayong certificate. Meron pa bang hiningi na mga documents to prove na, oy, nasa inyong mga kontrata nyo, nasa inyong mga bill, nasa inyong mga love letter nyo, nasa inyong mga convert. May mga hiningi pa ba sa application nyo? Kasi alam ko, married, madali lang. Ito, certificate ko. O tapos, walang kwento. Sa app, sa sitwasyon mo, Kat, may hiningi pa ba yung immigration pag submit mo ng application? Yes, uh, marami pa. So, kasi initially, we planned to submit a common law, right? So, mm-hmm. we had to have, sabi, kagangayon na sabi mo, property sa nakapangalan sa amin. So, wala kami nun kasi uh, we, were in a long, we were in that long-distance relationship. So, wala kami nun. So, all we had uh, was uh, we submitted pictures, 20 minimum at least 20 pictures na magkasama kami, 20 pictures na magkakaibang lugar, magkakaibang date. Mm-hmm. And then, we submitted letters um, from her side of family and friends and my side of family and friends. So, hindi wala namang specific number na letters, pero mas marami, mas maganda. Mm-hmm. And dapat talagang pag binasa na yung letter, dapat lahat magkakapareho ng story. Hindi naman, ibig sabihin, pare-pareho yung sulat. But what I'm saying is, magtutugma yung yung timeline so let's say uh we met uh, Donaldo met Catherine and this uh here the, in this country in the Philippines and this year something like that parang tugma yung story ba hindi, hindi lang siya yung copy and copy yeah that's what i'm mm-hmm. trying to say so dapat may consistency yung letters and then um so kailangan din makita na we are supporting each other um could be financially and emotionally so she had to send me um, money as money transfer para makita na you know, meron siyang support financially na pinapadala to me para isus mga proof na talagang in a relationship kayo. And then, aside from that, um, we also had to take a screenshot of our, I don't know, kasi nahirapan kami gawin to ha, nag-backtrack kami ng conversation namin sa messenger from the first time we started talking. So, since 20... December of 2017, I had to go back ng ganong kalayo. Mm-hmm. So, h- hindi namin siya makapipaste. So, nag-screenshot ako. Talagang chinaga namin yun. I mean, ako pala. <laughs> chinaga ko yun. Simula sa umpisa, kailangan nila makita yung conversation namin. Mm-hmm. And then, we also st- we, we have, we were also sending emails to each other. So, isa din yun sa mga kanilangan. Um, you know, parang love letters through email. Mm-hmm. Ganyan. So, we did that. And we also sent a copy of those email conversations that we had. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung mga requirements na kanailangan na Ayan. additional. Additional. So, yun. So, mm-hmm. kailangan, if you're thinking right now, mga kap, this is a very good uh, thing to i-highlight nyo, ilagay nyo sa listahan if you're thinking about common law, um, sponsorship, na kailangan yung i-prove na meron kayong um, supporting documents with cut. Uh, although kahit married, uh, married yung uh, kinasal sila dito sa Canada, naghanda pa rin sila ng mga supporting document. Uh, kinailangan ba yun o talagang si inas ng immigration lawyer mo yun na i-attach na doon sa application nyo para hindi na hingiin in the, so far? Um, actually, kailangan talaga siya. Ah, kailangan uh, talaga siya. Okay. It's, it's, one of the, it's one of the proof na kailangan. So kahit meron ng marriage certificate, kahit meron ng certificate, kinailangan pa yung supporting or... Oh, um, kung permanent residency through spouse, mm-hmm. um, yung iba doon siguro hindi na kailangan. Okay. So, ang iniwan namin is yung uh, letters and pictures. Yan na lang. Yun. Kasi yung marriage certificate, napakamagandang katunayan na yun. Talagang kasal na Oo. kayo eh. Diba? So, Correct. So, yun. So, for, sa common law, just we just want to clarify it. Pag common law, sabi nga sa, sa Pilipinas, para madali mas maintindihan, live in. Ano? live in. Hindi po kayo kasal pero nagkasama po kayo. So, just in case na ito yung entry nyo dito sa Canada as common law, kailangan nyo ng supporting documents as mentioned ni Kat. So, pinaghandaan po nila yun through preparing letters, photos, conversations, love letters, email, 
or sulat, messenger, lahat yung naka-prepare. Pero yung entry po ni Kat dito sa Nova Scotia is through TRV or Temporary Residence Visa at dito na po sila nagpakasal sa loob ng Canada. So yung supporting documents na sinabit nila ay marriage certificate, definitely napakagandang katibayan na yun na kayo'y kasal and some of the supporting documents like photo and letter. So yun. So kat nandito na tayo sa Canada, uh, na i-process na natin, nag nagpakasal na um ano na yung ano next step doon. So ano na nangyari kay Kat um, after the wedding, na submit mo na yung documents. Ano yung plans? Yun. So, sa ngayon, talagang naghihintay lang ng papers kasi, mm -hmm. syempre, before you can start working, dito sa Canada, kailangan mo ng work permit. Mm -hmm. um, so, yun. Sinabit namin yung application namin nung mid-October. Um, tapos, naghihintay kami hanggang sa dumating ang mid-December, mm -hmm. uh, bumalik yung application namin kasi mali daw yung... Um, yung marriage certificate na sinend namin. So, meron kasi silang parang tinatawag na long form and short form. Mm -hmm. So, medyo na-confused yata sila doon sa receiving area nila. So, yan. Uh, nagkaroon lang ng isang challenge in, the, in that part kasi nasayang yung oras na nandun doon yung application namin sa mm -hmm. CIC. And then, binalik lang saying na... Kulang. You know, kulang or mali. Or mali. Mm -hmm. And then, Oh, but then we made sure kasi actually we made sure we made phone calls to the vital statistics tama naman daw yung paper na sinend namin so para ang nangyari is hindi yata sila na inform na binago yung form na ipinapasa for marriage certificate Ayun. so whoever received our documents siguro hindi pa siya aware na ganito na yung itsura ng paper Ayun. so so we requested for another one which is yung long form I'm sorry, we, we submitted the long form first and then we requested another one para itama lang yung sinabi nilang mali. So, short form, pareho lang naman ang nakalagay. It's a marriage certificate. Pareho lang. So, correct. So, sinamit namin, binalik namin siya before Christmas, Christmas break. Mm -hmm. And then, bumalik sa amin yung confirmation letter na na-received na yung application it's in process noong mid-February. Ganun <laughs> siya katagal. Yeah. So, oo. Oh. So, so yun, oh, at least okay na kami doon. Um, yung huling narinig namin from the lawyer about that PR application was uh, kila, pwede na daw ako mag-start magbayad for biometrics. But once na mag-start, mag-open na ulit yung offices nila, pwede na akong magpunta for biometrics. So, I think yung next thing na kailangan kong gawin after that is yung medical exam. And then after nun siguro, yun na, dun mo na malalaman yung result. Ayan, napakaganda. I, th I, I think nap nap napakadali na to after a long wait. Um, ramdam na ramdam ko, abot tanaw na ang iyong PR application or PR card. Ayan, gaganyan mo na yung PR card mo sa amin. And meron na akong PR. <laughs> Ayan, um, congratulations in advance. I know, sabi nga, think positive. Uh, walang imposible uh, sa, sa iyo especially. I know you're ano, hardworking ka din. And of course, talagang pinaghandaan at uh, pinaghandaan mo itong uh, moment na to. And I'm very happy for you, Kat. So, sobra. And number one, maraming okay. salamat din for joining and sharing your story. So yun, uh, nandito na tayo from Philippines to Canada. Nandito na tayo. We're just, we're just waiting now sa PR application natin. Waiting na lang tayo sa ating PR card. Um, Kat, I know Kat, ito yung hindi pinag-uusapan sa Pilipinas. And most of our cup ay, kung hindi pinag-uusapan, ay itinatago. Uh, marami ako nare-receive na mga messages private messages. Kap, gusto ko pong kunin yung partner ko. We are living in ganitong bansa. Ganito, ganito, ganito. Um, gusto namin magpakasal sa ibang bansa para sa same sex kasi Pilipinas wala. Ito yung mga private messages na hindi ko din alam kung paano sasagutin. Kasi um, it's either kulang ako sa information, hindi ko naranasan to. So, I will give the screen. Hindi Flora, no? I will give the screen to you, Kat, to <laughs> to inform them regarding sa same-sex marriage. Kasi ito yung conversation na yung mga kababayan natin, mga kap natin, ay itinatago yung conversation na to or sabihin na natin, they are not yet ready to discuss it online kasi nakikita niyo sa Q&A, live to eh. Madami nanonood. So, may mga questions ako nare-receive na, kap, ano dapat gawin? Ano, paano ba pag same-sex marriage sa Canada? 
open ba ang same-sex marriage sa Canada? Kumusta po ba yun? Pagpa, alam mo yun, paano ba? Ano ba yung sitwasyon ng community, ng lugar? Alam mo yun? So, Kat, I'll give the screen to you to share to us the um, yung, yung same-sex marriage and the life of a couple na sa, sa inyo po. Yan, so... Siyempre, kagaya nga na sabi mo, sa Philippines kasi it's a stigma kapag nakita nilang two, sec- two same-sex uh, gender magkasama or living in together, automatically, iba, iba-iba na yung mga naisip nila and maraming discrimination, di ba? At yun yung iniiwasan namin. Um, but since, siguro, since 2009, I'm very open na I'm I'm lesbian. So, so yung mga tao, yung mga kakilala ko, Uh, people around me, they're used to seeing me with, you know, being with another woman or be, sometimes being with another man. So, depende yun talaga sa environment mo. Um, so, nung nakarating kami dito sa sa Canada, parang feeling ko masyadong, parang nabigyan kami ng freedom to just be ourselves, be together. <clears throat> Excuse me, na wala kaming iisipin na worries na yung mga tao dito, i-discriminate ka, although meron talaga siguro one out of ten. Ganun. <laughs> Pero, majority of the population, okay naman sila eh. Walang, wala kami na experience na masama. They were very welcoming and especially yung family ni, ni Donada. So, because, you know, same-sex marriage is legal nga dito. So, yung mga tao, open-minded, open-minded. Mahilig ka ba magkape? Open-minded. Open-minded. May open mind sila about it. So, yes. hindi hindi makikitig yung pag-iisip nila. Alam mo yun, I don't know how to explain it in another way, but yun yun. Um, yung family ko naman, if you're gonna ask how they accepted it, um, at first, syempre, hindi, hindi ko masabi rin ang diretsyo na I'm getting married with, you know, Donalda, um, with a woman. So, parang dinaandaan ko siya eh. But my, my, my mom knew na ganito na ako ever since pa. Pero yung part na magpapakasal, kasi... You know, pag sinabi kasi gano'n, hindi masyadong accepted. Parang sabi nung narinig ko sa mga ibang tao na, bakit kailangan pa magpakasal? Pwede nung magsama na lang. ba? Diba? It's And it's not it's not in the Bible. You can't do that. Parang gano'n. Sabi ko, why can't you just mind your own business? Para maging maseta yung lahat. <laughs> so, yun. Um, dinandahan ko yung pagsabi ko sa mom ko. And then, eventually, she accepted it. And she she saw how how nice Donalda is as a person. You know, so parang na, na, nakita niya na talagang sincere siya and she's really, uh, you know, just genuine yung feelings towards me. So yun, kaya naging okay siya. Naging okay siya sa setup na ganon. And then she even um, uh, came with me to, you know, fit my wedding dress kasi ginawa ko yung, pinagawa ko yung wedding dress ko dun sa Pilipinas. So dinala ko siya dito. Um, Sinamahan niya ako sa final wedding dress fitting ko. Yun, kung happy naman siya. Um, so thankful ako kasi my, my family has been very supportive. Um, kahit na ako pa lang yung unang-unang tao na nagkaroon ng ganitong kasi ng relationship and marriage sa buong pamilya. So they are very supportive. Yun. Um, okay yung pagtrata sa amin dito. I would say in, in the mo- for the most part. Um, you know, wala akong feeling na mabigat kagaya nung pag nandun ka sa Philippines. Pag tinitignan ka ng mga tao, walang ganong feeling. So dito, okay, parang may freedom ka. Yes, ayan. Um, sobrang nakaka-proud uh, uh, Katron uh, for sharing the story kasi it's very inspiring to all our cup, especially yung mga cup natin na they are not vocal. Hindi sila verbally doon sa online natin. Madami po, sobra. Kung maraming mga nag-message sa akin from our Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum, from When in Harlem Facebook page, mga nagtatanong regarding to that. And ka thank you very much for sharing this. Eh ako dito nakikita ko din. I will ask also special key with regards to these scenarios. Marami tayong nakikita dito sa Nova Scotia sa Halifax na same sex. Wala lang normal. Period. Wala. <laughs> normal. In sabi nga ni Kat, open-minded. Ninatawa lang ako kasi sa Pilipinas, yung open-minded, mahilig ka ba magkape? Kape tayo. <laughs> Manasa ka virtual kape yan tayo. Pero, virtual, ano, I mean, talaga, totoo. I mean, makita mo, okay, that's it, wala. No no questions. Walang mga second look, yung mga ganito sa Pilipinas, di ba? Pag nakakita, <laughs> wala. So, I mean, dito okay. sa Canada, dito sa Nova Scotia, most especially, kasi nandito po kami, normal. That's it. 
Uh, kasal ako sa same sex? Okay. Period. Wala nang mga additional like, talaga? Bakit? <laughs> Di ba? Wala. Sa Pilipinas, Correct. may patanong pa eh. May patanong pa. Ha? Bakit? Totoo ba yun? Yung mga gano'n, di ba? So, dito, I mean, period. So, pero, kat, um, na-mention mo, but 1 to 10. May, may, do you have experience that you want to share? Or, uh, may mga na-experience ka bang worst scenario na you want to share to us? Kasi sabi mo, 1 to 10. Pwedeng 0 or pwedeng none. Pero may na-mention mo, 1, merong may something hmm. 1 to 10. <laughs> Meron ba? <laughs> you want to share? Uh, are you comfortable to share? or Ah, uh, Okay lang naman, pero hindi ko na sabihin ko ano yung sinulat nila. Ay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we currently live in an apartment building kasi we're still planning for, you know, moving to our own house. Um, and then, you know, one day, pumaba kami sa kotse, sa parking lot, nakita namin yung kotse, may, may alam mo yung keyed car, yung keyed markings. Mm-hmm. Um, Parang sinulatan, ganun. Oo, dun sa driver side, handle ng door, mm-hmm. sa taas non may nakalagay na two words na mm-hmm. discrimination. It's um it's uh, a hate crime. Mm-hmm. So, ni report namin yun sa police and mm-hmm. they said that it is a, it is a very rare um issue here. Kasi parang hindi ko alam kung kami lang yung nag-report ng ganong case, pero parang first time lang yata nila nakarinig ng ganong report. So, it's a hate crime. Mm-hmm. And then yun. So, okay naman yung mga police na dumating, hindi naman sila yung Mapa, wala silang mapanghusgang tingin. Okay sila, they're very pleasant, they helped us. And then, up to this, up, siguro, in the past few nights, nagro-ronda pa rin sila sa paligid ng apartment to check, you know, yung kalagitnaan ng gabi, baka may mga gumagala, tapos nagsusulat ng kung ano-ano. So, yun lang naman. Siguro, may reason sila kung ba't nila ginawa yun. Mm-hmm. And we're thinking na most everybody na kakilala namin dito nagsabi, baka kakilala namin kasi alam kung saan kami nakatira, kung ano yung sasakyan namin, and kung ano kami, kung ano kami as a couple. Parang right. ganun. So, yun. So, that's the pinaka-worst na nangyari and it's only one and very rare case. Uh-oh. Thank you, thank Correct. you, uh, thank you Kat for sharing that one. At least, makikita din nila mga kap natin na, ah, meron din pala. Pero, most of the general, uh, comparing Philippines and Canada, ano masasabi mo with regards to that scenario? Um, sa Philippines, uh, feeling ko, kaya, hindi lang nila kayang gawing sulatan yung coach mo eh. Kaya pa nilang sabihin yun out loud or isigaw, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, yun. yun. Pero I'm, uh, uh-huh. sabi ko nga, nakaka, nakakalungkot sa Pilipinas. Kasi sabi nga, sabi nga natin, marami ako mga friends uh, na nasa, nasa senaryo na yan na they are in relationship pero hindi talaga nila ma-voice out. May mga malalakas na loo, which is I'm proud of it, na, uy, ito, at least they, they're vocal um, sa social media, to their family, to their friends. Uy, in relationship ako with same sex. So, yun, marami tayong mga friends na ganun. Pero sa mga cup natin na they are not yet ready na, guys, hey, <laughs> I'm in relationship. So, yun, um, sabi, ko nga na, sabi nga natin, love is love, di ba? Love is love. <laughs> so yeah, uh, special K, do you have any um uh suggest um comment or insights that you want to share with regards to the scenario dito sa Halifax in terms of same sex? Kasi marami tayong nak- nakikita, especially you are in downtown. Marami tayong nakikita mga same sex na magkakasama. Um ano ba yung impression ng 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 Halifax? Ano yung impression mo? Uh first of all, thank you, Miss Kat, for sharing your story. Actually, uh, sa mga ibang caps natin, si Miss Kat kasi parang local celebrity dito yan. Pinapanood ko lang siya sa East Coast, sa YouTube, ganun. Tas, dahil sa shinare mo dito, parang kilalang kilala na kita. Parang, <laughs> parang kaibigan na kita. So anyways, with regards to yung observation caps, yung mga kapitbahay namin, ganyan din, same couple din. So it's really non-issue. Siguro once in a while meron yung mga kamukha ng pinento ni Miss Kat na na isolated incidents pero kung generally pag-uusapan sobrang normal parang it's not even an issue here parang dito kasi parang everyone is polite, respectful. Meron din siguro ng ganun pero generally speaking parang napaka-normal. Hindi siya it's not not even an issue. So yun. Pero thanks for sharing. Maraming Yes, thank you very much, Kat. And ayan, Kat, 
Uh, sa lahat ng mga nanonood ngayon, mga kap, if you want to follow Kat- Catherine Rhodes or Spice Rhodes, follow her on her social media, especially on YouTube channel. So, dahil kinikwento ni, ni Catherine Rhodes and um, inspiring all our caps or kapatid natin, um, with regards sa kanyang journey. So, Kat, invite mo naman sila sa iyong uh, YouTube channel. Ano ba ang kanilang kaaabangan sa iyong channel? Ano ba yung kanya um, um, inspiration mo? Or ano ba ta- right word doon? Ano ba yung um, um, topic or um, mga kwento mong sinishare sa iyong YouTube channel? Ayun. So, guys, please go to my or visit my YouTube channel. It's called um, Spice Roads. So, Spice kasi it's my nickname ever since. So, Spice and Roads. Um, so what I do in my channel, I upload videos about number one, lifestyle, lifestyle vlogs. Um, I also upload top 10 list videos. So random top 10 list na, you know, mga natutunan ko, mga natutunan ko since nag-work ako, and aaral ako. So, you know, I make up a specific top 10 list. Um, culture, culture differences, um, Canadians and Filipino cultures. And then, yung mga adventures, mga ganun. Uh, so far, wala pa namang masyado adventure dito na nagaganap because of COVID. Pero isa yun sa mga susunod na i-upload ko. Um, I also upload, you know, new things na try ko dito sa Canada. Like food and yung mga norms nila. So all that, you know, pasok lahat yun sa Canadian culture. Um, and syempre, mga topics about uh, LGBTQ. Um, I know na nag-upload ako ng, yung very first video na na-upload ko is about same-sex marriage. Like, what you need to know before, or, you know, or when planning same-sex marriage. So, yun yung pinakaunang na-upload kong video. So, all all about fun stuff, interesting, and educational. So, hindi lang siya puro, puro life vlogs. Meron ding mga informative contents. Ayan. Yeah. So, yun, uh, kaaabangan po natin yan. And I think most of our cops that are watching right now, they're very interested to follow you para ma-inspire sila sa iyong kwento. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan. So, of course, meron tayong uh, question from... Ayan! Tanungin natin mga kap natin nandito ngayon. So, do you have question mga kap? Ayan. So, if you have question with Catherine Rhodes, Daisy, Manuel. Yes, si Manuel Manahan ay nandito. Ayan. Shout out sa'yo si Aili Rhea, Mandag, uh, Jerry Mike, and Aileen. So, do you have any questions to our special guest, Catherine Rhodes? And if you have questions, i-unmute nyo lang po yung inyong uh, microphone. Daisy, do you have any questions? Ay, wala na. <laughs> See, I mean, yeah, thank you, Daisy. Ayan. Uh, Manuel, ayan, may question po ba kayo sa ating special guest? Ayan. May tumatawag sa phone. Mamaya ako magkatanong pwede ba yun? Sige, sige, sige. Ayan. So, I think walang mga question ng ating mga guest ngayon, Katrin. Katrin tala. Katrin or spice? Bakit spice pala? Sorry. Gusto ko matanong <laughs> yung spice eh. Na, na, ano, na ano yung dila ko sa spice eh. Para, kasi pinapanood ko yung mga channel mo na nalatak sa isip ko spice roads, spice roads. Pero dito naman, pag tayo sa ano naman, sa East Coast tayo sa Havena na Halifax, Kat, Katrin, Kat, na, nalilito ako. Bakit spice? May kwento ba yun? Oo, pero may iksi. <laughs> may? So, uh, nag-start yan kasi I- I'm a fan of Spice Girls. So, nung time na yon na-spoiled ako ng, ng papa ko, binilan ako ng lahat ng outfit, shoes, ganyan. So, kinopya ko yung, yung, yung look nila. Mm-hmm. So, sumula nun, tinatawag akong Spice Girl. So, parang parang pangit naman kung may girl sa dulo. Inalis ko na lang yung girl. Spice na lang. Spice, <laughs> Spice na, na lang. lang. <laughs> Oo, yun. <laughs> Ayan. So ayan, follow follow Catherine Rose uh, sa YouTube channel is Spice Rhodes. Spice Spice Rhodes, tama ba? So ayan, and shout out also kay Rosalyn Beltran. Sabi niya hi po kay Tita Grace GP Rivera and of course sabi ni Jennifer, good evening po. What if yung common law partner ko po? What if yung common law partner ko po may anak na din po kami? Hindi po kaya yung equation bakit di po kami nagpakasal? Kung sakaling mag-apply po kami as a caregiver pathway, thank you po. Follow-up question, di ko po ba kayo magiging problema sa application nyo? So, I think, uh, Kat, may gusto mo ba sagutin or regarding sa question? Um, 
Ang um, hindi ko po alam ang isasagot ko diyan kasi wala, wala pa naman po ako wala akong nag-apply ako at hanggang ngayon. Pero mas maganda po siguro kung mag-consult kayo sa ano eh, immigration consultant. Mhm. Yeah. Hindi na ko po kailangan mag-hire ng lawyer kasi baka shadowing. Iba yung oo. Hmm. So yun ang marirecommend ko kasi feeling ko talaga iba din kasi yung process noon. Mm-hmm. So uh, regarding sa common law, ito lang po kasi yung key for the common law. I think uh, I'm not sure kung tatanungin ka, pero dito naman kasi sa Canada is very equal. So hindi po sila magtatanong sa iyo, bakit hindi kayo nagpakasal? Yung mga, <laughs> di ba? Correct. So they always respect your decision. Kung nag common law ka din mm. common law ka. The key for that is you need to prove na kayo ay common law. Ano yun? Na-mention nga natin yun. You have contract. Let's say, apartment contract. Mortgage. Di ba? Nakalagay yung pangalan mo at pangalan niya. Di ba? Meron kayong mga anak. Di ba? Or meron kayong mga bills na nakapangalan sa'yo at sa kanya. So, may mga proof. As I mentioned, may mga letters. May mga photos. May mga... So, may mga supporting documents lang kayo na nagpapatunay na kayo ay common law. Pero with regards to your question, tatanungin ka ng immigration bakit hindi kayo nagpakasal? <laughs> diba? I Correct. think, I'm not sure kung tatanungin yan. Definitely, for my perspective, hindi yung tatanungin sa'yo. Kasi dito sa Canada, is they're very sensitive um, with regards to that question. Yung ang paglagay ng photo sa resume, hindi pwede. Yung pa kayo magtanong. <laughs> diba? So, again, yung common law ay pwede po dito makapasok. Yung mga lived-in provided, you need to prove na kayo ay common law kayo ay naglive in Sabi ko nga, sa common law, ang definition, para sa madali maintindihan, para din kayong kasal. Para din kayong kasal. Ang pagkakaiba lang, yung certificate of marriage. Yun lang yung difference. Kung ano po ang meron dito sa me- sa kasal, sa common law, ay dapat meron din. So, yun. Yun lang. Wala lang certificate. Yun. So, I hope I'm able to answer and, your question. And Cap Joey, I think, Siguro yung process noon mas mas madali siya. I would say mas madali siya kasi sila yung parents nung mga bata, di ba? That's right. Yeah, mas madali. Okay. Eh may meron kang proof na ito yung mga anak namin, siya nakapangalan sa birth certificate birth ng mga certificate. anak ko, di ba? So yun. Correct. And I think I will also highlight yung sinabi ni Catherine, if you really need a advice from a, a licensed consultant, I recommend Miss Mel of Adjok International because Miss Mel is really willing to help us with regards to our Canadian dreams. Ayan. So, wala na tayong mga questions with regards to spousal. Uh, marami na tayong mga nagtatanong. Mga kap, if you are thinking to immigrate here Canada, sa Canada as a common law or um, same-sex marriage, dito sa Canada ay napaka-open po uh, ng Canada sa same-sex marriage. Sa Pilipinas, hindi na yan pinag-uusapan. Maraming mga stigma, maraming mga, alam mo yun, mga uh, negative comments or ano bang right word nung kat yung parang hindi tanggap de ba yung mga tao parang maraming mga uh, ano right word ba yun? yung parang may bang sinasabi de ba pero dito sa Canada period kasal kayo that's it de ba so I'm I'm okay. very happy sa Canada and isa ito sa mga nakaka proud at isa ito sa mga nakaka inspire na kung kayo po ay nangangarap pumunta dito kasama inyong partner, Canada is the best place. And I mean, that's my, my, my opinion for everyone. So, if you thinking na ang Canada para sa iyo, in doubt ka pa, etong kwentong ito ay isa sa mga inspirasyon mo, punta ka na dito sa Canada. <laughs> Kat, we have question from Manuel. Manuel, anong question mo, Manuel? Good day po sa lahat, especially to Kap. Kap, hello. Ah, uh, common law partner yung pathway ni Miss Catherine. Tama ba, Ma'am Catherine? Ah, uh, spousal po. Spousal. Ah, so hindi siya uh, same sex. Ano? <laughs> hindi ganun. Kasi um, sorry, hindi ko na... Um, same sex pa rin po siya, pero um, hmm. kasi yung, yung permanent residency, pwede mo siyang i-apply as common law kung hindi pa kayo kasal, pero pagkasal na, spousal. So regardless kung anong gender ng napangasawa mo, same sex kayo or not, uh, hmm. under pa rin siya ng spousal. Yes. Okay. Uh, may tanong ako kay Cap. Cap, Joey, pwede magtanong sa'yo? Yes po. Okay, Cap. Uh, possible ba na magbigay ang magbigay ang, ang company ng appointment letter without the interview? 
possible ba yun kap? Nang ano? Nang uh, job offer without the interview, possible ba yun? Ah, yan. So yung question mo ay kala ko related sa sponsor sponsor spousal really spousal yeah. ano uh, tawag dito spousal uh, sponsorship. But anyway, with regards to your questions, tanungin kita. Kung yeah. ikaw ba ay nakatanggap ng trabaho na hindi ka nagdaan sa interview, in doubt ka ba? Yes. Nakatanggap ka ng trabaho na hindi ka naman nag-process sa interview at mayroon ka ng job offer, ikaw ang tatanungin ko. Saan galing 'yon? Pero Uh, diba? For example, nag-apply naman ako Tapos nag-send ako ng resume And then the company give the offer letter I think that's any... the process That's the process of the company Pero dito, based from our experience Palalaging tatanungin ka For interview okay. Pero, Pero I mean, I don't know Kasi depende sa company The best thing kayan ay babalik mo yung company The only person na makakapagsagot sa iyo Is the company itself Bakit pag sinabi ko sa iyo na ay hindi dapat meron kang interview, malay mo yung company talaga nagbibigay ng job offer. Oh. 'Di ba? Oh. So the best way is balikan mo po yung employer mo kasi yung employer mo lang ang makakapagsabi, bakit po yes. hindi niyo ako in-interview? Sabihin niya kasi swak na swak at ikaw na yung hinahanap ko, no need for interview. Malay mo, 'di ba? So I think the best person na makakapag-answer sa question mo is you the employer. Pero based from my our perspective, based from our experience, dito sa Canada, when naghahanap ako ng trabaho, they always go for the interview. The reason why is, gusto nilang malaman kung ikaw ba talaga qualified. Ikaw ba talaga swak doon sa position na yon. So kung tinatanong mo, posible ba na makakuha ako ng job offer without in- interview? We don't know. Balikan mo yung employer mo, bakit po hindi niyo ako in-interview at binigay niyo ako ng job offer? ba? Diba? So... I mean, uh, I mean, kahit kahit naman saan, uh, meron talagang interview because especially kung foreign worker ka. Pwede yung mangyari kung dito sa Canada kasi pwede yung recommended ka ni ganito na ganito. Ah, sige, wag na lang kasi recommended yan ni Joey or recommended something dito, di ba? So yan, I think, go back to your employer, ask them directly, bakit po hindi din ako in-interview? <laughs> di ba? I mean, di ba? Ikaw, Kat, sa tingin mo, Kat, Kap, kap, uh, one more thing. Ano kasi, na, naitanong ko na rin kay Ms. Mel. Yung, uh, Manuel, na- Manuel, i-stop kita ha. Kasi okay. uh, our discussion is about sponsorship. And with regards to the topic is medyo uh, malayo yung ating uh, discussion with regards to that. And ayoko ma- ma- ma-mislead yung ating conversations with that. Okay lang? Okay, thank you. So yun, uh, balik tayo doon kay Catherine. Kasi uh, with regards to spousal sponsorship, And I hope I'm able to answer your questions, uh, Manuel. And yun. Any questions regarding sa spousal sponsorship before we end? Napakahaba ng ano natin ng oras. Any additional tips, questions from our attendees? Any questions? Wala. Kat, uh, yun. Balik, kayo sa, balik ako sa iyo, Kat. <laughs> Sabi ganun, no? Katrick, with regards to the uh, application, naikwento na natin yung process ng ating uh, application from from Philippines, from from uh, going to Canada, uh, na, nagkaroon na tayo ng, ano, ng marriage certificate, na-process na yung documents natin, and we are now on PR, waiting for our PR or work permit, we're waiting na lang. Um, with regards to the, the journey, regarding sa experience mo, uh, yung mga sabi na natin challenges, Ano yung magiging quick tips mo, three or four tips mo sa ating mga kap na nanonood right now with regards to the spousal uh, sponsorship? So number one is uh, dapat you know you're you're honest with your application kung ano yung purpose ng so let's say mag-apply ka na muna na tourist visa you have to be honest kung ano talaga yung gagawin mo kasi the more na if a fabricate or babaguhin mo yung story the more na hindi ka ma ma approve kasi Uh, meron akong kakilala na nag-approach sa akin na uh, they tried doing this kind of process then same sex then hindi sila na approve kasi they try, they submitted submitted the application na magkaiba yung reason sa unang application tapos na reject yon sa second application iba ulit yung reason na reject kasi may history na eh, na ni uh, ni CIC yung applications mo before 
So just be honest and stick to your story kung ano man yung reason mo. And uh, make sure na yung requirements mo is complete talaga at dapat tama lahat. Kasi pag may isa doon na mali, yung pagkaka-fill out mo sa form, mali yung nilagay mong info, tapos, or cool lang. Talagang ibabalik nila yon Hindi nila yun sasabihin sa'yo as, um, can you please send this other document that you missed? So ang gagawin nila, ibabalik nila lahat yon And pag binalik sa'yo lahat yon um, at nag-submit ka ulit, that's another time frame. Additional time frame for you. So, so um, isa pa lang, dapat tama at complete yung papers. Um, so, what else? Yun, yun ang yung masasabi ko talaga. Um, kasi yun ang naman yung naging challenge namin before. So, dapat tama yung requirements and complete. And mm-hmm. just be honest with all the information that you will put in the application. Ayun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kat, for that. I think that I just want to highlight yung being honest. Kasi sa being honest, um, dun sumasabit eh. Kasi... Kung honest ka talaga, it's very smooth yung pag, uh, pag-prove mo. Kasi na-mention mo about letter. Dapat yung letter, yung timeline, nag-jive or nagmamatch. Let's say, for Perfect. example, nagkakilala kayo ng June 21, dapat sabihin niya din, nagkakilala kayo ng June 21. Kung hindi kayo honest with regards to your application, for sure, magkakarambola yung mga dates. ba? Diba? So, yun. Isa sa sa mga Perfect. i-highlight natin. And at the same time, complete your documents. With the documents, mm-hmm. I think, It's either you you invest time to research what are the documents. Sabi nga ni Kat, pwede ka mag-apply by yourself. Directly, you can go to the Canada CA, right. you can apply by yourself. But again, you need to complete all your documents. And konting mali lang, konting mali lang, pwede bumalik yung inyong application at maging mabagal yung iyong pag-process. Gaya what happened mm-hmm. with your application, Kat, na nagkaroon lang ng confusion with regards to the form, bumalik yung papel para i-update uli. So, it takes longer again, mag- yung waiting time again. So, I think this is very important to take note na with regards ta, sa mga documents, the number one key is do your research, invest time to read, invest time sa mga information na makukuha mo to make sure na yung mga documents and documents na require or yung pag-fill up ng form ay tama. But again, if you need to ha- ask assistance, do it. Make sure mo lang na uh, licensed immigration consultant o lawyer yung kausap nyo. With regards to CAT, I think um, immigration lawyer yung nilapitan nila to make sure yung uh, kanilang application ay uh, ma-process. Tama ba, CAT? Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, meron akong um, i-add na isa pa. Um, kasi nung nandun pa ako sa Pilipinas, isa sa mga kinukwento sa akin, ng mga friend ko na nag-migrate na, they always talk about yung magkano bang pera ang kailangan kong meron ako sa account ko mm-hmm. para, alam mo yun, ma-approve ako for a tourist visa kasi mm-hmm. di ba laging requirement yan. Mm-hmm. Um, nung nag-apply ako ng, tour, ng temporary resident visa, wala naman akong magalong malaking pera sa account ko. Actually, parang yung last pay, pay, last pay ko lang sa company na tinatrabuhan ko yung laman ng account ko na pinasa ko dun sa application. So, di ba, hindi siya yung six digits. Mm-hmm. Hindi din, but, alam mo yun, hindi siya ganun kalaki. Pero, ang naging uh, malaking tulong doon is kailangan yung sponsor mo, siya yung sa letter of intent niya, nakalagay na siya yung, you know, sasagot sa accommodation mo, siya yung sasagot sa lahat ng kailangan mo, and at least yung sponsor mo, meron siyang naka-iwan naka- na funds na ganitong amount. So, I would say mga 10,000 minimum mm-hmm. Can- Canadian dollars to support you sa length ng stay mo na, so, Let's say, let's say yung original plan mo was just to stay for 30 days, dapat yun yung specific na amount mag-suffice for the entire 30 days mm-hmm. na masusuportahan kanya pag nandito ka na sa Canada. So, ganun yung in-advise sa amin ng lawyer. So, hindi naging problema sa end ko na wala akong pera, ganun, ganun kalahang pera sa account ko. Hindi siya naging problema. Kasi isa yan sa mga feeling ko na iisip ng mga tao, kailangan mo na malaking pera dyan. Mm-hmm. So, hindi naman siya ganun. Basta yung sponsor mo is merong ganun funds na naka-set aside lang at hindi gagalawin, at may proof ka na isi-send mo sa app, with your application. Yun. Thank you, thank you, Kat. That's with regards to the tourist or TRP, right? So, yun. Yes, napakagandang, correct. ano yun, napakagandang tip yun, mga Kat. So, if you're thinking to visit or to have a tourist visa, ito yung tip na magandang itake, no? Hindi mo kailangan ng masyadong malaking pera, and may sa letter of intent na kalagay yung pupuntahan mo ay willing to support your expenses. Ayan. So, yun. 
Uh, Kat, maraming salamat for sharing your your story, your timeline, your tips. Maraming salamat for sharing po and ins- inspiring ating mga kap. Again, mga kap, if you are on YouTube right now, if you're watching YouTube or nasa Facebook po kayo, please visit Spice Roads on YouTube channel. Congratulations pala, nasa 1,000 subscribers na. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Because of the content. <laughs> Napakaganda ng content mo. And of course, you are always inspiring our all our cup. Um, all our cup na makapag-migrate dito sa Canada. And thank you for that. And thank you for, for helping us, for inspiring us, for sharing your story. Um, yun. So, yun yung mga tips. Uh, we already discussed yung timeline. We already discussed, meron na din tayong tips. Tips na from cut. Uh, from cut. Um, yun. Ano pa? Ano pang pwede natin i-share, uh, Kat? Invite mo ulit sila sa ating uh, sa yung YouTube channel. Sabay ganun, ha? <laughs> ano yung, uh, may, meron ka dun, ano, ano, meron ka dun video regarding sa same sex? Kasi may mga kap nag-med sa akin. Yes. Meron po bang may video regarding dyan? Um, yung video ko na yun, yung, yung when, you know, planning to, when planning to have, um, <laughs> ah, so yung video ko, five things you need to know when planning same-sex marriage. So it's like a general information, ano may mga kailangan mong malaman, at mm-hmm. mga kailangan mong, um, you know, isipin bago ka magpakasal. Mm-hmm. So yun, um, meron din akong videos sa mga food, Canadian foods, na syempre, na walang ibang country na meron nun, so talagang sila lang. So meron akong top five doon na video. video. Isa yun sa mga unang videos ko. Um, meron din akong videos na t- teaching teaching my wife how to speak um, gay lingo. Oh, okay. <laughs> gay lingo actually. <laughs> ibang yeah. level agad eh, gay lingo. Gay Kasi lingo. may mga alam na siyang may alam na siyang ibang Tagalog words pero in, in level up ko kagad sa gay lingo. <laughs> Tapos pinatry ko din siya ng mga Filipino food na binili ko dito sa Asian ano, store. Ano, uh-huh. uh, meron yung din yung balot na panood ko yun eh, yung balot. Oo. Ayan. Um, share ko yung link. Marami. Ko yung marami pa. Link, uh, mo sa ating chat box. So mga kap, visit Cat Roads uh, YouTube channel. The link is already posted in our um, in our chat box sa ating when in Halifax. Visit uh, visit natin yung YouTube channel ni Cat kasi marami po tayong ma- makukuhang inspiring story from her and of course yung mga kwentong Canadian Filipino experience. Ayan. And of course um sa Glo- New Glasgow. Ayan, sa New Glasgow, this is 4 hours. Oh no, sorry. 2 hours drive from Halifax. One and a half. Sorry, nawala ka dun. Sorry, nakamit pala ako. Yeah. <laughs> 1 hour and 45 minutes. 1 hour 45 minutes. So yun, mm. medyo malayo. So you if maka- nakakuha kayo ng employer through the AIPP at taga New Glasgow, alam nyo na po yung yung email message at para ipa-follow si Spice Rose po yun. Ayan. Kasi yung New Glasgow, napakalaki din po yan dito po sa loob ng Nova Scotia. So, ayan, may mga maririnig kayong mga lugar like say, say, Cape Breton. Saan ba yung Cape Breton? Sa Nova Scotia po yun. Saan ba yung New Glasgow? Sa Nova Scotia din po yun. Kasi ito yung problema sa Atlantic Province is napakalaki. Napakalaki. May Nova Scotia, may New Brunswick, may PEI, may Newfoundland. Sa Nova Scotia itself pa lang, ang dami pang mga towns na pwede mong puntahan. So, gaya ng New Glasgow. Sa New Glasgow, I, I think it's a growing community as well. Marami ng Pilipino sa New Glasgow. Yes, madami. Mm-hmm. So, yun. So, And we, we have uh, the best Picto County pizza. Yun. So, imagine that. So, malay mo, nakakuha ka ng employer sa New Glasgow and hindi mo ma-visualize yung lugar, hindi mo alam kung saan ka pupunta. Kasi ako na-experience ko noong 2016, uh, nakakuha ako ng provincial nominee sa Nova Scotia, at sabi ko, Halifax. Saan yung Halifax? Saan yung Nova Scotia? <laughs> so, wala akong idea. So, now you have idea, ano yung Halifax. Malay mo, nakakuha ka ng New, New Glasgow employer, meron kang employer sa New Glasgow, follow Spice Roads. Ayan. So, we're almost in the end of our kapihan sa when in Halifax. And dati natin palaging sabi, pictorial. Pictorial. Wala na si Spice. Ay, wala na si uh, Special K. So, na- nawala yung ano, nawala yung si Special K also. 
Ayan, pictorial tayo. Walang mga kape. Si Daisy, no? Wala. Talo gusto yung picture ni Daisy. Ayan, si Daisy. Yes. Manuel, ayan. O, picture tayo. Tasa, tas natin yung ating mga tasa. Ayan. Ready? One, two, three. Ayan. So, post ko ulit to sa mga kape. Sa mga nag-join, maraming salamat uh, for joining us. And of course, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat na nanood sa ating When in Halifax um, live streaming sa ating kapihan sa When in Halifax. Uh, follow Kat on uh, kanyang YouTube channel. And sa lahat na nanonood ngayon, meron po tayong every Thursday, 10pm Manila time, kapihan sa When in Halifax. Hashtag uh, your virtual kapihan. So, next Thursday, very special topic naman kay Mark Mortel is about student pathway dito naman sa Nova Scotia Community College or NSCC. On the next Thursday, uh, July 23, tinan ko yung calendar. July 23. So, July 16, we have our special guest, uh, Mark Mortel. Uh, Mark Mortel is a student po, student pathway dito sa Nova Scotia Community College. Kung saan ikikwento niya yung kanyang timeline from Philippines, nag-aral sa NSCC, at nandito na sa Canada, yung kanyang application for permanent residence. So, it's a very interesting kasi marami pong nangangarap na mag-aral dito sa Nova Scotia Community College and they want to get more ideas about it. So, I strongly advise join us this coming Thursday, uh, July 16. Tingnan ko yung calendar. July 16, 10 p.m. Manila time. And this coming Thursday po uli sa 6th cup natin is we have on July 23, we have also another student pathway. Ito naman po ay kaibigan ko sa Naga, si Joy Abayon, kung saan ikikwento niya naman yung kanyang student pathway journey na from Calgary naman po siya sa Pilipinas hanggang makapunta dito sa Canada, sa Calgary. Ikikwento at pag-uusapan natin yung, um, yung journey niya sa student as an engineer dito sa Pilipinas. So, mga engineer naman po, ano. So, if you want to to join our conversation, if you want to ask more questions to our guests, I strongly advise to join the webinar. Kasi sa webinar, pwede kayo magtanong directly to our special guest. So, ayan, meron tayong dalawang guests about student pathway. So, July 16 and July 23. So, same time po, bring your coffee because no coffee, no entries atin. So ayan, uh, napakabilis ng oras, hindi ko napansin na it's almost one hour. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Catherine Rhodes, for sharing your story, for inspiring uh, inspiring us. Hindi ako magkasawang magpasalamat sa'yo kasi this topic po talaga ay hindi pinag-uusapan. And thank you, Kat, kasi ikaw yung nag nagbukas ng conversation. And I'm, going, I'm looking forward to create more topics about this kasi... After this, uh, may mga nag message sa akin. Kap, salamat for open this discussion. So, I think this is a very inspiring to all our Kaps. Um, na sobra, sobra nakakatulong. So, I received three and three, three messages, messages right now, Kat, na nagpapasalamat with regards to our conversation. Maraming salamat. And yun, um, to all our Kap, uh, any question, last questions before we end? Meron pa tayong mga five, three more minutes. Okay na ba tayo? Wala na. Wala na. Okay na. Daisy? Wala na. So, ayan. Um, I'm going to end our live streaming now. Ayan. Maraming salamat for joining us in our web, uh, our kapihan. So, ayan na lang. Wait so, ayan mga kap, maraming maraming salamat for joining us on our kapihan sa when in Halifax. And don't forget to follow us on our Facebook account, When in Halifax, and click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, i-click mo na din yung notification button. And of course, join our Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum and ang ating apat na grupo na community. So we have community for AIPP, Student Caregiver, and OFW. All these links will be posted in our description. So don't forget to click the subscribe na, now na, as in ngayon na. And thank you for joining us and kita-kits tayo dito sa Canada. Thank you mga kap. Bye!